Need to, this is public. Go ahead, public. Off the road. Public. Public. Don't follow it. Do you want me to run you over? Oh, like oh, uh, did, oh, we got that as a threat now. He literally threatened to run me over. Commit homicide. Why am I asking to back off? I'm asking you very nicely. Back off. Humphrey here with Rebel News. Now, if you're already a Rebel News follower, then I'm sure you recognize this building behind me. It's the courthouse in Surrey, British Columbia, where the serial litigator, formerly known as Jonathan Yaniv, who now goes by Jessica Yaniv and Jessica Simpson, assaulted my colleague Kian Bexty with a swift punch in the head. It's also where Mama Yaniv tried to do the exact same thing to my other colleague, Sheila Gunn Reed. And more recently, it's the same courthouse where just a couple of weeks ago, I reported on not one, but two of Yaniv's court appearances that both ended up being adjourned. Now, if you are not familiar with all of our reports on Yaniv, and there's more than the ones that I just mentioned to you, make sure you head to yanivtrial.com. Believe me, Tiger King takes a back seat to the bizarre binge-worthy saga that involves Yaniv. Now, when I last reported on Yaniv, both of the Yanivs, Mama Yaniv included, were on their best behavior. I thought for a sliver of a second that maybe there had been a new leaf turned, but boy, was I wrong, you'll see so and see why in this video. Now, Yaniv hasn't changed one bit, so keep watching. But first of all, today's court appearance was in connection to Jonathan Yaniv's weapon charges. These charges stemmed from a video in which Yaniv bragged about having a restricted taser and brandished it on camera during an interview with YouTuber Blair White. After concerns, viewers drew attention to the matter, including notifying the police. The police found the tasers as well as pepper spray and bear mace at Yaniv's home and charges were eventually laid. Now, I wondered what type of condition Yaniv would show up in or appear to show up in today, considering that Yaniv has claimed on social media to have been in a bad car accident last Monday. Good morning, Yaniv. Do you have any remorse for assaulting my coworkers? Are you disappointed that your fees, your attempts to waive your fees were squashed? Have you made a full recovery from your accident the other day? Say no remorse, I guess, hey? So. Now, due to COVID-19 restrictions, only six people were allowed in the courtroom. Unlike last time I covered Yaniv's appearances, I actually made it into the courtroom, courtroom 102, and awaited for Yaniv to appear. And boy, do I mean waited after about a two-hour delay, reportedly due to having to wait for the arrival of Yaniv's counsel. Yaniv finally faced the judge. Both Yaniv's lawyer and the Crown proposed a joint submission to the judge requesting a conditional discharge with one year probation. The condition included counseling and they suggested restricting Yaniv from possessing or using any restricted weapons. Telling the judge that Yaniv has been at the brunt end of bullies since a young age, Crown added that the reason Yaniv showed the taser during the YouTube interview was because it was supposedly an interview about the challenges transgender women face and how it isn't safe for Yaniv to walk the streets. I'll show you a clip from that interview just to refresh your memory and you can be the judge of if that's accurate. I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk, which is illegal in Canada, just then, but. The Crown didn't mention any of the assaults Yaniv has committed, including the ones we've captured at Rebel 
on tape. Instead, the Crown said to the judge, you don't need to saddle Yaniv with a criminal record. Yaniv then interjected while standing up slowly with a hand on the hip. I believe it was this one groaning in pain. And Yaniv's lawyer then explained to the court that Yaniv's hips were both hurting him. I presume from the alleged car accident. Yaniv claims to have just been in. What's interesting is that Yaniv had no issues going up and down the double flights of steps in the courthouse moments before instead of taking the elevator like I would do if my hips hurt. Anyhow, Yaniv felt it appropriate to make sure that the judge was aware that allegedly many police officers were already aware that he owned a taser, even complimenting how cool it was, yet they declined to take it from him who knows, maybe that is true, since Yaniv seems to keep getting away with way more than what you and I probably would do in the eyes of the law. Now, after hearing the carefully crafted description of Yaniv by the Crown, the judge made her decision paraphrasing almost verbatim what Crown Counsel Lee described to her, she agreed with the joint submission laid out before her. She also confirmed that based on what she had read from a filed psychiatric report on Yaniv, that Yaniv had been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, gender dysphoria, and post-transition. The judge then ruled for Yaniv to be discharged with one year probation and conditions that included keeping the peace and good behavior. We'll see how long that lasts. Actually, you will see how long that lasts in this video. And also if Yaniv changes the name or the address, he needs to report it within seven days of doing so and also needs to attend any counseling or programs outlined by the probation officer. The judge also ruled for a two-year restricted weapons uh, restriction on Yaniv, so we can't have any weapons. Letting Yaniv off with a slap on the wrist is not in the public's best interest. Don't follow me. Don't follow me. Don't follow me, Donald. Can you come near me, man? I will No, you I'm asking you not to come near me. So this stay over there this and back way. off. Don't need to. This is public. Go off the road. Public. 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 Don't Do you want me to run you over? Oh, 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 did, oh, we got that as a threat now. He literally threatened to run me over. Commit homicide. I'm asking you to back off. I'm asking you very nicely. Back off. Man, you're a menace, man. You're going to be in there soon. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Look at those autistic Oh, look at you, you little predator. After being handed a break by the judge, one of the conditions, in my opinion, is already broken, and that is to keep the peace. Threatening to run someone over with your vehicle is not keeping the peace, and that shows that you are a danger to society. Not only that, you were doing it right outside of the courthouse in front of police officers. Now, just because you have battled, you've had struggles with gender dysphoria doesn't mean everybody else out here should be less safe. This is why we report the other side of the story, because if we don't, Crown will keep painting their own politically correct agenda and people like you and I will suffer for it. Drea Humphrey with Rebel News. As you can see here at Rebel News, we report the other side of the story and it's really important to do so. Sometimes we're across people who are not the safest to be around. So if you want to help support our journalism by keeping our reporters safe, both legally and physically, please head to journalistdefensefund.com. We appreciate your support.